Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Boxing Science TV. This is episode 9 and we're going to be covering the top 5 shoulder exercises for boxing with Rob Madden. Now before we get into this I'd like to ask you a quick favour and just click the subscribe button, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to be uploading lots of free content over the next few months and we don't want you to miss out. So please click subscribe and enjoy this episode. Okay, so welcome to episode 9. And like I just mentioned, this is going to cover the top 5 shoulder exercises for boxing. And this is going to be delivered by physiotherapist and certified strength and conditioning specialist, Rob Madden. Rob is a very knowledgeable, nice guy. He's got loads of experience within boxing. He's worked at the very top. He's been working with Anthony Joshua and James Gale and many other boxers on the professional circuit. I first came across Rob on social media. Uh, he was doing great things. I reached out to him, uh, wanting him to do a workshop for us for the Combat Condition Conference 2018. And he delivered the boxer's shoulder. And this workshop, uh, me and Tommy went down to, uh, to London. Rob presented about, you know, why do boxers get shoulder injuries? He talked about the anatomy. He talked about some of the, the training methods that boxers use that might cause shoulder injuries. He shared a few tests that we could do and also shared his top five exercises to help rehab or try and prevent shoulder injuries happening in boxing. I want to share these with you today, so get your pen and paper out, write it down, write down the coaching cues and the benefits, and uh, enjoy Rob Madden's top five shoulder exercises for boxing. All right, so I just want to move on to my, my top five uh, boxing shoulder exercises. And really with these, for the audience, I've tried to tick as many boxes as I can. So many of them will, will really maximise grip strength, shoulder stability, going through as much range as we can and targeting different, different positions and challenging the joint. As well as that, a couple of the exercises become great warm-up drills to do with your fighters, perhaps before they're sparring or going into bouts. And one of the key points to, to remember being, when we're pushing people in training, we know that pushing them to fatigue is absolutely paramount. However, if you're warming them up before, uh, before a spar or before a fight, make sure you're, you're not overdoing that, that fatigue because you want to keep them, keep them fresh. All right, so... My top five exercises now in boxing, are, some of them are great warm-up drills and some of them are more strength specific, so many of these will be favourites of you guys, I'm sure. To kick it off, we're going to do the pal-off press, uh, which many of you will know. A uh, couple of simple ways uh, I, I, I vary this being, uh, in this case, the right arm has an internal rotation bias. Now, of course, we know this is a, predominantly a trunk exercise. The left arm's intersecting and then we're pressing straight ahead and it's an anti-rotation exercise. You can of course vary it by taking the band in the left arm, so we then bias the external rotators of the left shoulder and pressing forwards. Now for me, I like this exercise as a, as a conditioning drill as part of S&C, but also it's a great warm-up exercise. And today I wanna to show you a way to, to, to load the arm isometrically in that uh, end range punching position, which is great to try and centrally stimulate the boxer before they're about to go out. So if you wanna take the band here, Tommy, if we take a right arm internal rotation bias, I'm going to ask Tommy as he comes out into that end range, he's going to resist against me, but then importantly when I let go, he's going to resist the rotation back. So press away, resist against me the opposite way, two, three, and then back to the midline. Good, excellent. Press away, resist against me for three, so we're getting a nice long lever external rotation, and then back to the middle. And of course, if you're using this as a, as a conditioning exercise, really trying to hit that area of fatigue and relax and back. If we're using it as a prep drill, then just a few reps to, uh, to make sure we're not over fatiguing the shoulder before they're going out to fight. Good work, yeah. Tommy. All right. Uh, so second exercise is a triple threat. Great exercise, a lot of bang for your buck because you're going to target a lot of the shoulder muscles. So we're looking at a pull, external rotation, and then a nice overhead press. So a, a, great, a great exercise to do as a prep drill, but also as part of uh, uh, conditioning for your athletes. Over to you, Tommy. So the first phase of the exercise is the pull. If we can do it in slow-mo first, Tommy, wide elbows here with a uh, neutral wrist. Okay, then the second part of the exercise is to externally rotate through the shoulders. Excellent. Trying to keep that thoracic stiffness here and then, and then overhead press. Good work. And then down and back and relax. 
And then tempo for this, we're looking at a 1-1-1 tempo. So if we go on towards that Tommy, one second, drive, down and back. And again, working towards fatigue, but if you are using it as a warm-up drill, then probably just four to five reps can be enough just to start activate those, uh, that multi-planar um, uh, multi movement. Relax, good work. Cool. <laughs> All right. Good. So third exercise is your single arm dumbbell chest press. I'm sure many SNC coaches are a big fan of this. I know a lot of my SNC boxing colleagues uh, uh, use this one. So here we're getting a lot of benefit. We're getting that contralateral stimulus across the, to the oblique. We're getting more grip strength on the left hand here. So we know, as we said earlier, that's really great for shoulder stability. We're also half off the bench. So we're getting a nice spinal hip extension with uh, a bit of recruitment through your glutes there as well. So getting as much as we can from the exercise. Uh, and uh, yeah. All right, so moving on to uh, a fantastic exercise the, uh, that many of you will know, the bottoms up kettlebell press. We're gonna do this in split kneeling to really bias the shoulder. So if we set up with your left leg leading, we want a nice tall trunk position here. And it's really important to coach this well if it's the uh, first time someone's done this exercise, neutral head alignment. And we're gonna ask the, the individual to pick up the kettlebell. And with the other hand, turn the weight upside down and stabilize the weight with the other hand. Uh, so if you hold it with, oh, yeah, just, advice. yeah, that's it. So now we're ha when we're happy, they're in a good position. We're going to encourage them to grip maximally and drive the weight up. Good work. Excellent. We're going to keep that low rib position, straight spinal position and aim towards the ceiling. I use the analogy of trying to balance a champagne glass on top of the weight. Try not to spill it. And uh, as you can see here with Tommy, he's got excellent control. And that tempo is great. We're looking at two seconds up, two seconds down. Fantastic exercise for all of those scapular thoracic muscles there and working on that eccentric co uh, control as well to get maximal benefit. So here we've got the uh, single arm figure of eight, so we can also draw circles. This is a great endurance exercise for serratus anterior, so your punching muscle, so really targeting all of those muscles. The, the serratus itself runs, as we know, from the back of the shoulder blade right around the ribs, so really bias it here. We want to build up some, some fatigue in this long, long range position, so you're aiming for around uh, 30 to 60 seconds, depending on the capacity of the athlete. If I can get Tommy here to show a, a trunk progression. So if we go into a, a three point position on the floor, it will uh, bias the trunk a little bit more. And if, you, if your athlete's strong enough, this might be quite a nice variation to do as well. Again, just asking them to make very small perturbations through the ball, keeping that trunk stiffness and, and alignment uh, good. And for this, you'd, you'd work on a shorter time period of around maybe 15, 20 seconds. Relax. It worked, Tommy. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Great little insight from Rob there. Some great exercises, you know, some that we haven't used before and we've been using ever since. And Tommy, you've never had a shoulder injury since, have you? Oh, where's it gone? Still getting used to this gimbal. No, never had a shoulder injury since. Cheers, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to keep that in. Um, yeah, so. With shoulder exercises, you know, really, really important. You know, it is definitely the most common injury that I've come across uh, with uh, the boxers down here at Boxing Science. And now you might be getting these new exercises and you might have a look at some more shoulder exercises as well. And you've got to think about where you're going to fit that in. We fit our, most of our shoulder exercises within a warm-up. Uh, but also we do uh, like a part of their recovery we give them hip uh, and shoulder mobility circuits so maybe you can get it um, done within there but also we do movement fillers so between the, like the key lifts such as like the back squat or or trap bar deadlift they'll do like a shoulder prehab exercise the banded triple threat is a great exercise to use in between trap bar deadlift because it's really kind of mobilizing and activating your shoulders as well and obviously you can use some movement fillers a little bit later on in your program as well. Okay, so I hope you've uh, enjoyed that. I hope you didn't switch off when the gimbal was going off mad. Um, yeah, I hope you're enjoying the Boxing Science TV series. Uh, we're going to be posting a lot more, so please, 
please press the subscribe button and hopefully we'll see you again next week for episode 10. Cheers. <laughs>